I'm Marshall Shannon with Ministry Design Concepts. Thank you for viewing our video today. We're going to deal with the leadership development process and talk about the, the priority in developing leaders. If you were asked to <clears throat> decide between several choices when developing leaders as to which one was the most important, what is the primary priority when we develop leaders in our ministries? Would you say it's their heads that we ought to build up their knowledge of what they are to be and how they are to do it and how they are to lead people? Are their hands to make certain they get hands-on experience that they get to uh, carry out the task? Or would you say it's developing their hearts? So as you look at these three, I believe that the primary priority in developing leaders is to minister to their hearts. And why would I say that? Well, let me give you several reasons why. Number one, when a leader loses heart, he loses. Leaders who do not lose heart become champions, not victims. Uh, folks, it's, it's not uncommon for me to get an email or a phone call from a pastor who is just really disheartened. They feel beat up, bruised, weary, worn, unappreciated, overstretched, uh, conflicted, they feel like the opposition and the, it's coming from within their own ministry and they're just beat up. They're in the middle of a battle and they're bruised and beaten and cut and maybe defeated. And so if we can keep our leaders and our ministries from losing heart, just as we're tempted to lose heart, they have the potential to become champions, not victims. And so if we want to help ourselves and help our ministry, then we need to make ministering to their heart the top priority when developing them. Here's another reason. Spiritual leadership is a work of the, of the heart. They are looking to be leaders, not just with the mechanics of leadership, of performing the task, but of leading them spiritually. It is easy for me, and perhaps easy for you, to focus on the head and the hands and neglect the work of the art. When it comes to developing people into spiritual leaders, we need to understand it's a spiritual effort first, because it is easy to focus on the head and hands, what they're learning and carrying out how to do the task and neglect the spiritual work and development of their heart as they walk with God and their own spiritual growth. To neglect that is an easy thing because it's easier to sit down and teach them something or take and show them how to do a task. So also why we feel it's a priority is we want to avoid spiritual heart disease or heart failure. You may take care of the rest of their head and their hands and the rest of their body and the rest of the job, but if they aren't cared for spiritually, they're likely to get heart disease or their heart fails them altogether. And in the middle of the battle, having a weak heart is not a good thing. To avoid failure through focusing on the mechanics of leadership instead of the spiritual formation of the leaders. We don't want to do this. We want to focus on the heart so we avoid failure, either failure of the heart or heart disease, or we fail through focusing on the mechanics of leadership, the head and the hands, instead of spiritual formation of their heart. So we want to give it top billing, top priority. At the heart of revival in our country is the revival of our hearts. If we want to see real live spiritual transformation in the lives of our church, our community, our country, and the globe, the world, at the heart of revival in any of those contexts is the revival of our hearts. And so if you want to start and see uh, your ministry turned around and things working correctly, let it start with the revival of your own relationship with God. Now, God is going to use some things to, to develop the heart. And what are those things? Well, the first thing I'm going to list is God uses testing times to grow us spiritually. You have James, Paul, and Peter who talk about tribulation, trials, testing times that God brings them into our lives. God uses 
testing times to grow us spiritually. He uses different kinds of tests. He uses and teaches different lessons while he is doing it. And he has different development. And so in essence, God is using testing times for our good and for his glory. But the scripture says in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 12, in particular verses 3, 4, 5, that he says there that, that God has a reason, a purpose for testing us. He wants to make us endure and entire. He wants to make us persistent and persevere. He wants to make us entire, complete, lacking nothing. He's wanting to shape our hearts. He's wanting to shape our determination. He is wanting to grow us up in our relationship with him so that we persevere and that we are spiritually whole. Like an adult having fully developed hands, feet, legs, heart, stomach, liver, kidney, lungs, circulatory system, digestive system. I mean, all the systems of our mind, our heart, and our hands. He wants to develop us entirely so that we are fit for service and so that we can know him fully. So God is, is using in the, in the leader's life, testing times for his glory and for our good so that we can be a partner with him to accomplish what God wants. And God uses opportunities for learning. So you got the heart in the testing times. You've got the head in the uh, learning opportunities that God wants us to do two things. He wants us to learn about him. He wants us to know the books of the Bible. He wants us to understand the doctrine. He wants us to memorize verses. He wants us to meditate on them. He wants to use it to change our life. But along with learning, about leadership and about church and about ministry and about uh, the scriptures and the spiritual world and the forces that, of darkness that we are battling with, that we're learning about him. So we worship him because we know about him. But I believe primarily God wants us to learn to know him. He wants a personal knowledge with him. I've had the opportunity through the years to keep company with some noted individuals, which I, I won't mention, but they were uh, national figures. And pastoring for years here in, in South Carolina gave me the opportunity to spend the evenings or a, a lunchtime with uh, noted officials and businessmen and politicians, uh, public servants, if you would, and to, to be able to talk with them from a sheriff to Vice President of the United States, so in, in, in everything in between there. In, and let me tell you something. I say that because I, it was a wonderful opportunity for me to learn from them, but I did not get to know them personally like um, the people that they live with all the time or serve with them all the time. I could read about them to learn about them. But for me to really know them, I would have to invest and they would have to permit me to invest loads of time and loads of opportunity to learn how they think, why they think, where and what they do at certain times, to know their character and their, you know, the very peculiar things about them, idiosyncrasies, and so forth. Folks, there is a big difference in between knowing about God and knowing God, just as there is a big difference between knowing what's right and doing what's right. So God is building believers, and we need to start with the heart because the Bible teaches us, doesn't all the issues of life come out of the, the conditioning of our heart? We're to keep it, preserve it, protect it, care for it, uh, because of so much the impact of how our heart is. And here's another thing. God wants to share himself with us. He wants us to, to share his heart with us, his passion, his redemptive passion, his, 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 what drives him, what makes him tick. God wants to share himself with us. He wants us to know him and his heart. Then God uses opportunities for service, for performance, and the experience we get from that performance. So what is God up to? 
He's, he's using the testing times, the opportunity for learning, and the opportunity for service. What is God up to? Well, he's up to it for our good in his glory. He wants us to develop. He wants us to develop. He wants us to mature. He wants us to have self-understanding and understand others. And as we draw closer to him, he is going to do a work in us where he gives us direction in life, discernment about understanding ourselves and others, but discerning what is going to be good and partnering with him and what isn't. What is God's will on every matter? Understanding the mind of God and his will and desire for us, his intent for us, takes discernment, and that comes from walking with God, and it comes, wisdom comes from God. So it's more than just book learning. It's the developed heart that comes through walking with God, where we begin to see ourselves as God does, and we begin to see others as God does, and he gives us direction, and he gives us discernment while he is developing us. And there's duplication. What I mean by that is Christ-likeness where we are in character and, and are in kind made to be like Christ, not like our old nature, our old flesh, sin, and self, but to serve God and to see us develop into Christ's likeness in conduct, creed, and character, in how we think and what we think and how we react and what we do. So God wants to make us more than great leaders. He wants to make us great people, great believers. He wants to make us useful. He is the potter and we are the clay. And he's trying to shape and mold and assemble us together and to bring out the very best of what he has to offer in us. He wants us to walk in the Spirit and see the fruit of the Spirit developed and displayed in our lives. So God's up to something good. He is going to bring glory to his name. If you cooperate with him, if you surrender yourself to him, to his will and his work, God will allow you to partner with him in a great way. So God is using heart development tools to help us. These are not original with me. I first read about them in A Work of Heart, Understanding How God Shapes Spiritual Leaders by Reggie McNeil. But in it, he talks about the following tools that God uses. I don't think he calls them tools, but they're, they're things that God uses to shape us as believers. And the first one is the calling that he puts upon us, that God's going to give us a calling, an awareness of his call, and a life's mission or assignment. The, the second bestseller in the world, I'm told, is Rick Warren's book on the purpose-driven life. So I would put that in your hands and put that in the hands of your people as you develop leaders. They need to understand how has God uniquely called them and what has he called them to be and to do. So as you consider this, God is working on every one of the leaders that you are developing. He is working through his calling on their life. Secondly is community, their friends, their family, their faith, those they don't know yet, even the fiends that might be in your community. God is using that to uh, develop them, the very community that they live in, the very environment of that community, and the people that are there. Then the culture, all the environmental influences, historical, political, societal, traditions, everything that makes up the culture is impacting believers in how they develop in their heart, how they think, what they think, the things they're afraid of, the things that they say they'll never see happen, the rules of life, the principles and, and percepts that they may gather in from their development, and culture is shaping us. Then communion. In communion, we're talking about the personal spiritual development efforts that he is putting in us and our personal relationship with God. So let me just stop here for a moment and go through some things that may be of help to you and just warning you, in your communion with God, he is shaping you. And the biggest leadership mistake has nothing to do with our inability to speak to large crowds or lack of goal-driven 
mover and shaker mentality. Neither is it found in our struggle with multitasking or effectively managing those placed under our authority and leadership. Our, we may spend years reading leadership books or taking the videos that I'm providing or talking to other leaders or trying to perfect our own ability to lead, but our biggest leadership mistake comes from neglecting a simple core foundational principle, and that is time with God in His Word, getting along with Him and allowing God to develop us so that we know more than just about Him and about the things that are important to Him, but we know Him. We have a personal knowledge. I have said this for years, and I want to say it to you. When I meet Christ for the first time in heaven, and I look him in the eyes for the first time. I do not want him to be a stranger. I don't want that look. I want to look at him. I want to be allowed to grab him and hug him. And I want to know him. You know, it is key to who we are and being a part of what God is and what he is doing in the future and how he'd have us to have an impact for eternity to see lives transformed. So here's some rules. If you don't spend enough time with him in the word, instead of being led, you are leading and you need to be led by him. And so you cannot serve God when you don't know him. You cannot serve God that you don't know. So that's number one. So work to know him on a personal level. So compare it to knowing uh, in the most intimate relationship if you're married is with your spouse. But as you learn to know people and understand them and learn how they think and what's important to them, what their heart is like, study to know about God in scripture but walk with him to know him. Secondly, you need to move on from the milk and start eating solid food, Hebrews 12.1. Number three, you cannot lead if you cannot listen. Listen to God. Be attentive and aware that he is right here, and he may be saying something to you, and you're too busy and being self-centered or unfocused on him that he can't talk to you. Number four, you cannot show the way if you cannot read your compass. God's talking to you. For instance, one of the biggest tests I have as a ministry coach is helping pastors discover God's vision for their ministry. You can't lead your church and lead in your community if you can't understand God's mind, if you don't know how to discover what God's will is. If you don't know how to get direction from God, then you're going to have problems leading because where are you going, buddy? How can you lead them to the preferred future, to the promised land, if you don't know where the promised land is and which place God wants you to lead your church? If you have no vision for the future, how are you supposed to lead them into the future? Here's the next one. You cannot serve two masters. Matthew 6, 24, no one, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, God and money. So, you know, there's a reason why the Bible calls money the root of all evil and not the root of some evil. Think about it. Money most likely is the driving factor behind 99% of the decisions we make. If you're not walking with God to serve him first instead of just looking at the pluses and minuses of that decision as to how it's going to affect you personally, you might end up in trouble. Communion is a tool God uses to build us up. And then commonalities, the, the common occurrences of life, so that when we are walking through everyday life, everyday routine, and God is putting those before us, the, the overall picture of God working in everyday life, he is shaping us through them, the ordinary and the routine. You may get tired of it, but God is using it in our lives. Next, God uses conflict. Well, I don't like conflict, but I do know that God is using it. 
the very nature of our work as a leader in God's army places us in conflict and in, in a combative position against destructive powers. We better learn how to deal with conflict. We better learn how to deal with opponents who are coming to destroy, try to destroy God and want to destroy us and destroy our ministries. We're going to have conflict. So what are you doing to strengthen yourself while God puts the conflict there? Are you looking for resolution? Are you looking for relief? And most times we, we're just looking for a reason why God is putting us through this awful experience and we're looking for relief. We don't want you know, something to resolve the conflict. Instead of looking for what God wants to do in us, he's trying to reproduce in us certain things so that we can learn how to help and work with him as he reproduces it in others. God's up to something good in our life, and he's going to bring glory to our name. That doesn't mean I'm not talking about prosperity here. I'm talking about being a part of God's eternal game plan for humanity on planet Earth. And he may have you starved to death. He may have you rooted right out of ministry. He may have you destroyed as a person and dead. But if you're going to walk with God and be used of him as one who has done Matthew 16, 24, if a man would come after me, let him take up his cross, deny himself, and follow me. It requires dying to self. And God is using these things in our lives so that we might be used of him. He is developing our heart, the very core of who we are, our very will and willingness to be used of him. He is using these things. When you go to develop people into leaders for at every level of your ministry, don't focus on the head first or their hands. Stop and nurture and equip and develop their heart for God. Well, I'm Marshall Shannon, your ministry design coach with ministry design training and ministry design concepts. You can reach me at this email address or either one of these uh, phone numbers. We'll be happy to help you one-on-one -on -one with your ministry as you develop your process for building leaders at every level of your ministry.